Vivian Paley, 114. Jason is having an ordinary conversation at the snack table when he begins, when he did, when did he be, when did he begin to speak to children in such a natural way? I'm going to Florida, Eli says, on a plane. I told mommy, can we go on a trip, Lily says. I'll tell her, we can we go with you? Did you see the propellers, Jason asks. They're under the wings. I didn't see them yet. Yeah, you really could see them if you sit down in a propeller plane, Jason advises, by the window, but not if it's a jumbo jet. You're right, Jason, Simon agrees enthusiastically. You mean a little plane, that kind. I'll tell my mother to go on that kind, Eli decides. Then you can see the pro propellers go round and round, Jason concludes. We have not heard such ordinary talk be from, before from Jason, yet at home he probably converses in this matter, manner all the time. We judge and evaluate Jason in a place where he has not been comfortable enough to engage in good conversations. In school, he has felt in need of repairs. I must always assume with any child that school is the source of whatever problems exist in school before looking elsewhere. But what if I'm aware of unusual or unhappy home conditions, especially so then for now the classroom will have an even greater responsibility for providing a sensible world. But what if I'm aware of unusual, I just said that, of course it is natural to seek blame in other places. The children do it frequently. Edward's roller coaster game is not working well today, and as his frustration mounts, he blames his closest neighbor. Stupid Jason! Stupid! Stupid! Why are you yelling at Jason? He's making too much noise. I can't remember how to do this damn thing. Are you making noise, Jason? No. Then it must be another reason, Edward. Can I help? <clears throat> I'm not doing this damn thing anymore, and he kicks the track apart angrily. You know why I'm so mad? Because Joseph, Jace, Joseph wouldn't sit next to me before. A long time ago? Yeah, that time. I'm really mad. Well, here's my advice. Think of something that makes you feel good and do it. I'll paint. Nope. I'll do a story. He puts bad into his story five times. There's a bad lion. He broke the clock because it was a bad clock, and he broke the track because it was a bad track. Then he saw a kitty. You're a bad lion. No, I'm not. Happily ever after. <laughs> Why is Edward in such a bad mood? There is much going on at home that makes life difficult for him and other family members, and the family is receiving help from outside resources. <clears throat> Nonetheless, it is possible to view nearly everything that happens in the, the classroom within the context of life in the classroom. Each day may be examined by the individual group and teacher in terms of what we see and hear, providing that our consistent stated goal is to see, see and hear and talk about everything that happens and try to find a fair solution. Perhaps in response to Edward's unwarranted attack, Jason has been un upset all morning. Nothing is right. He calls everything a mistake. At snack, his empty juice glass provides the reason for all that is wrong in this classroom. He sobs loudly. I need my juice. I need my juice. You didn't fill it up. I'll be ready in a moment, Jason. I'm fixing the peanut butter. His hand trembles as he holds the glass and knocks his napkin and crackers off the table. My crackers! He wails. My juice isn't. You won't. Hurry, teacher. Edward says you're making him cry. This can won't open. Wait a moment. I think it's dented. Here. This can won't open. Wait a minute. I think it's dented. Here. Let me get another can. It's your fault, teacher. Alex insists. You're making him cry. I'm sorry, Jason. I say, pouring his juice. I couldn't seem to get the can open. Maybe we need a new can opener. And you, and you made Jason cry, didn't you, teacher? Lily asks, tears of sympathy in her own eyes. I didn't want to make him cry, I apologize. He must have been very thirsty. Or maybe his helicopter is broken, Samantha says. Something surely feels broken today to Jason. And the children recognize the feeling. Or maybe nobody wanted to play with him. Maybe his mommy was shouting at him, Edward suggests. I think he wants me to play with him. Do you, Ira asks? He wants me to play with him, Samantha assures Ira. He wants to be the baby so he can stop crying. Right, Jason? Jason finishes his juice and leaves the table. He has not responded to any offers of friendship, but is in a more hopeful mood as he begins a new pile of helicopter paintings. The second one amazingly looks perfect to him. <clears throat> Look, teacher, this one doesn't got any mistake. You did it in two tries, Jason. One, two, because my fingers are getting longer and stronger, Peter adds. 
Uh, but not wronger, I say laughingly, bringing out Jason's first smile of the day. Samantha's pursuit of Jason grows more inventive. I'm putting you in my story, Jason. Come here and listen. I don't want to. Yes, you have to. I won't give you a piece of gum when my daddy buys some. Okay. Jason sits down next to Samantha and watches as she dictates her story. Had a teacher threatened him in such a manner, he would withdraw, as it is his interest in stories, as it is, his interest in Samantha's story is heightened. He correctly interprets her warning as a sign of friendship, and the story proves him correct. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Then a helicopter came. Then the little girl said hello to the helicopter. Then a kitty says hello to the helicopter. Then the kitty and the girl and the helicopter are friends. Alex is not to be outdone. I'm putting you in my story too, Jason. You're going to crash. In my story, the helicopter crashes. Is that okay? I think so, he responds, gathering a pile of papers for his helicopter draw pictures. Don't draw now, Jason, Samantha urges. You want to be my husband? No, because I'm busy. Or the baby or the cook. Do you want to make a birthday cake? Do you want to be dead? But then you come alive. Remember, you liked it that time. As Samantha imagines other scenes, she doesn't notice that Jason has stopped drawing and instead has cut a large oval shape. This is your cape, Samantha, to be a queen. I'm the king. But when I glance at their block castle a while later, Jason seems to be the queen's baby. Does Samantha continue to push Jason into the baby role because he appears babyish to her? I doubt it. I've seen too many mature children prefer the baby crib in play. To think there is a direct connection between other characteristics and inner desire. Samantha's motives, I think, are simple and understandable. She likes being the mother, and she is fond of Jason. To express her true feelings, she must act out the role of his mother. The mother baby. Relationship spells love, most dramatically for most children. By year's end, Samantha will have moved to the big sister, little sister version of the same emotion, and Lily will happily give up her own mother-lost-child scenario to become Samantha's little sister. It is interesting that in Samantha's helicopter story, she's a little girl. Perhaps it is difficult to imagine the mother's role in a helicopter fantasy. How fortunate this is for Jason, since Samantha must therefore persuade him to leave the helicopter house at least once a day. Here, her need to play the mother-baby scene provides Jason with a logical context for non-helicopter play. By comparison to Samantha's urgency, my plans are but empty distractions. What about Alex's plans for Jason? He, too, has put him in a story, but his motives are not quite as clear as Samantha's. You're supposed to crash, Jason. Alex instructs him when they are together on the stage. I'm making my wheels go round. No, Jason, you gotta crash to pieces, fall down. It doesn't break, Jason replies. He means pretend, I offer to help. It didn't pretend, Jason argues. Alex, could Jason land safely? He doesn't want to crash. Yeah, he could. There's another helicopter crashes. Not him. Who wants to crash, he asks, and a number of hands go up. Crashing suits most boys. But Jason is not yet willing to allow another child to have control over his crashes. Nonetheless, the experience makes Jason bold. He jumps up as I turn to Arlene's story. Who wants to be in this story, he asks. Raise your hand. The children are puzzled for a moment, then begin to hold up their arms. Arlene herself watches with great interest. Who wants to be a helicopter? I don't have a helicopter. Jason looks at her quizzically. Well, what do you have coming from Jason? The question is startling. This may be his first acknowledgement that people create different characters just as he has fashioned his helicopter role. His successful resistance to Alex's crashing helicopter has enabled Jason to perceive more consciously the line between I am a helicopter and I choose to be a helicopter. I have a helicopter, Arlene says, Oh, I have a mother, Arlene says, and she's a snake. And there's babies, too. Are you the mother, Jason asks. As soon as Arlene enters the stage, Jason returns to his seat. He rotates his helicopter blade slowly, whispering to himself, My guess is that he is saying, Who wants to be the helicopter? It is his rehearsal for the future when he will feel comfortable in approaching another child. Do you want to play with me? Who do you want to be? After school, Trish and Gail want to talk about Jason's remarkable performance. 
He was pretending to be the teacher, J Gail says. I don't think so, Trish argues. Uh-uh. I think he suddenly realized what these stories are all about. But he used Vivian's exact tone. Yeah, I know, but I think the question itself suddenly made sense. Is there a helicopter in your story? Who wants to be the mother? These are decisions you make, not mysterious impositions from the outside. I'm a bad guy, Jason tells me. You locked me in again. Who locked you in? You did because I won't take a nap because I'm a helicopter, a bad helicopter. I pretend to search for the key. Ah, I found the key. Give me the key, Jason says. Now I'm unlocking the helicopter. Someone put him in jail. Truly it is Jason who has found the key as he cautiously integrates new ideas into the original helicopter fantasy. I have only to watch and listen and sometimes play the game in order to see how the process works.